Tarantier. Rapporté. 22, S242, numéro 22, S242. On debate, Senator Klein. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honor to speak in support of Bill S242, which has been put forward by Senator Patterson. This has an important piece, this is an important piece of legislation, and I trust that this will, bill will receive the support it needs to become law both in this chamber and in the other place. I note with interest the fact that for the past 20 years, senators and members of parliament from all parties, groups, and uh, pardon me, and caucuses have stood up in parliament and made clear the need for improved broadband internet service in rural and remote areas, and also areas that are heavily populated by indigenous peoples. Every Canadian should have equal opportunity to benefit from the internet and its services whether it's te telemedicine or virtual health care, receiving, receiving social services, pursuing education or professional development, or even replacing old legacy business systems with new applications. Internet access allows for expanded participation in new market economies, driving economic transformation for indigenous nations and other rural and remote communities. It's an issue that supersedes region, province, partisan affiliation, even the different levels of government. The calls have been strikingly similar, even though the politicians making the calls have otherwise had little in common. Frankly, it's a message that hasn't really changed over the ensuing de decades. The need for improved broadband services in rural and remote areas remains high. And in fact, it's a need that has only grown more and more acute, acute with time. I won't repeat the text of Senator Patterson's bill, but in simple terms, this bill, if passed, would require entities that hold an internet spectrum license, which is a license to provide internet service within a prescribed geographic area, to offer internet services to at least 50% of the population in the underserved region that the license covers, and do so within three years of the license being issued. If the entity does not provide service to at least 50% of the population covered by the license, then the license would be reclaimed by the government and put back up for auction. Under existing legislation, companies that hold internet spectrum licenses are not legally required to use it, and many companies instead choose to simply hold on to their spectrum without using it to offer internet services to Canadians, many of whom are in need of the service or upgraded services. In the end, many of those companies will resell their spectrum making millions in profits while having done nothing to provide improved broadband options in rural and remote communities. It's good for the business that sold the spectrum at a profit, but it's bad result for taxpayers and, generally, and Canadians generally who tend to pay more for broadband and have fewer service providers to choose from, from relative to people living in other developed countries. Bill S-242 would help put a stop to the practice of private companies sitting on Spectrum life licenses. The use it or lose it approach is long overdue, and that just makes sense. The federal government auctions off Spectrum to private companies for one primary purpose, to provide broadband internet service options to Canadians in underserved markets. Unfortunately, when companies instead choose to sit on their Spectrum, it does a real disservice to those people who live in areas with a limited population, or in areas where poverty and other challenges make connecting to the internet more difficult than in urban areas. Private companies hoarding spectrum without using it makes those challenges more difficult to overcome and an ever, ever widening economic and prosperity gap between the urban and rural and remote communities continues to exist. It's to time to change this behavior and that's why I support this legislation. Of course, a spectrum and the way it's allocated is but one part of the challenge. I do not believe that S242 will solve all our problems when it comes to providing enhanced broadband service in rural areas. However, it will require internet service providers to offer better and more reliable service in more regions of the country. And that would be a significant improvement over the status quo. In fact, this status quo is not merely inconvenient for rural Canadians, is costing the country in unrealized, in unrealized productivity and increased economic potential. This past April, 
I rose during question period and asked Senator Gold about the enormous gap that exists between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples when it came to having access to 50, 10 download and upload speed internet service. While I appreciate, uh, greatly appreciate the work and funds that the Government of Canada is committed to closing the gap and to closing the gap in rural and remote areas more broadly, the fact remains that we aren't getting the job done. Broadband service in the north is notorious, notoriously spotty and, it, and it's the same in many rural portions of Western Canada, especially Indigenous Nations communities. As a Senator for, from Saskatchewan, or for Saskatchewan, I'm all too aware of the challenges facing Indigenous residents of my province who live outside of the major centres, Regina, uh, Regina and Saskatoon. The stories I hear aren't just an anecdotes. In its 2020 communications marketing report, the CRTC released st statistics on the percentage of households on First Nation reserves that have access to broadband internet at the CRT standard of 50 to 10 megabits per second download and upload speed. And in Saskatchewan, the number of households on reserve with access to that speed is just 1.7%. In Manitoba, the number is 2%. We must do better. Again, a lack of action on improving broadband services is costly. A 2021 article in the Edmonton Journal noted that during the COVID-19 pandemic, some ho households in the Northwest Territories were paying upwards of $2,000 a month in data overcharges. This at a time when being apart and working virtually was mandatory for many people. That's not fair, nor is it sustainable. Poor infrastructure, limited competition, and lax spectrum laws have all contributed to an unacceptable situation, especially for Indigenous peoples. A key component of reconciliation is working together to ensure that First Nations, Métis and Indian peoples can share in the same economic opportunities that others Canadians currently enjoy. There's a growing digital gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples in Canada. If Indigenous peoples do not have, their, have fair and equitable access to broadband internet, the gap will only grow, and that will have devastating economic consequences for one of the fastest growing demographics in our country. We're at a risk of presenting and preventing an entire generation of Indigenous youth from reaching the level of economic opportunity they could otherwise strive to, and that's something we need to fix. I believe that Bill S-242 is a first and important step in that direction. The reality is this. There is nothing more I can say on this topic that hasn't already been said a hundred times over by politicians at all levels of government from, from across the political spectrum. In fact, it's one of the few things that partisans from all sides can agree on. Canadians need better access to broadband internet. Reforming the method by which the Government of Canada auctions off its spectrum license and protects the integrity of the same would be a win for everyone not to mention the need for more robust usage of, broad, of the broadband fund and good governance of the same. Mr. Speaker, I'm tempted to conclude this speech by stating that now is the time to improve broad, broadband internet service in this country. That wouldn't be the truth. The truth is the time to have done this was probably 20 or more years ago. Compared with other developed countries, we're way behind. And if Bill S-242 helps us get one small step closer towards closing the gap, then we need to support this legislation. The internet isn't just a tool that can be used by a small business to sell their goods across the world, nor is it just a valuable resource for school children doing their homework. It's the way we connect with each other. We need to make access to broadband internet service as wide reaching and as equitable as possible. That's why I'm in favor of this legislation. Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased to lend my support to Bill S-242, and I hope that my colleagues from all groups will do the same. Thank you.